Hello guys, as a part of my mission in 2022 to reshoot old courses and update them, I've just reshot the free course Laravel 7 for beginners. I've recreated a similar project with Laravel 9, with new thoughts, with new microphone by the way, which didn't exist at the time. So in this video you will see that full course, I decided to release it on YouTube as well, or maybe if you prefer it you can watch it on laraveldaily.teachable.com. It is still free, just maybe more convenient for you to mark the lessons as complete. Here on YouTube, you will still have sections in the descriptions, so you can click around, but maybe as a course, it's more convenient. Also, you may check out my other courses. These are the older ones, which I will reshoot one by one in upcoming months. And here are the latest ones, including Alpine.js, Inertia, View 3 with SPA, Livewire, and stuff like that. And the best way to get them all is yearly membership, and by subscribing to yearly membership, you support these YouTube videos, which I can shoot for free and publish on YouTube. Now let's get to the course for the beginners. Probably you are not the very beginner if you're watching this channel for a while. So you may pass that course, send the link to someone who wants to learn Laravel from scratch. Enjoy watching. And if you have any comments, shoot them below the video. In this first lesson, we will install new project with Laravel. We open up the documentation and installation has quite a lot of information. But interestingly enough, there is no one way to install Laravel and you can find different information on different sources. The official Laravel documentation is mostly based on a tool called Laravel Sale. So for example, if you click getting started on Mac OS, it requires Docker desktop to be installed and then you need to run Laravel sales sale up command to run your new Laravel project. You can read more about Laravel sale separately in the documentation and how it works. But this is not what we will do in this course. My personal preference to install Laravel is with Laravel installer, which existed almost from the very beginning of Laravel. Laravel sale is pretty recent. Newcomer to the scene, from what I remember, it was released with Laravel 8. And the idea here is to use Docker for all the installations. But for me, I preferred old working way, which doesn't require Docker. Again, it's a personal preference and there's no one way to install Laravel, but I will proceed with my personal way. You may like it or not. You may read more about Laravel sale and those official recommendations on getting started, but I will proceed with installation via Composer. Installation via Composer requires you to have Composer installed on your machine. And generally on your machine, you have to have web server, but if you work with PHP before Laravel, I assume you do have web server already. On my MacBook, I have and I use Laravel Valet as my preference. Again, there's no one tool here. For Mac people, Laravel Valet and Laravel Sale are probably the most popular choices. For example, if you're on Windows, number one choice from what I've been reading online is Laragon, so you can try that. So you need to have a web server and then you need to install Composer. Composer is a dependency manager for PHP, which means it will install all the dependencies into your project, including Laravel. Laravel is basically just a package on GitHub. It's github.com slash Laravel slash framework, and you can install that into your PHP project with Composer. I will not show how to install Composer because it's already on my machine. You can click getting started and depending on your operating system, you run the commands that are listed in the documentation and configure the Composer. What I will do in this video is install Laravel. So we get back to this and we install Laravel installer. Composer global require Laravel installer, which I have already run on my computer. So to create a new Laravel project with installer, all I need to do is run Laravel new and then the name of the project, which will be a folder created as a subfolder. So in the terminal, I run Laravel new and let's call our new project project. It will create a project subfolder and with my Laravel valet, by default, it will create a domain locally project.test, which I will just run in the browser. So if I run project.test, I have Laravel homepage, currently version Laravel 9.7, and we already have Laravel installed. If we open up PHP Storm with that project, the main file that we will start with in the next lesson is routing. So you have homepage, which leads to welcome file, and welcome file is in the resources views welcome.blade, 
which contains all the HTML that you can see on this home page. Now let's dive into the code and see how that welcome page actually works. Now we need to understand how that all works. So if you want to define the route, the URL, you do route get in the very basic example, then your URL, which is in our case homepage, and then a callback function, PHP closure function, which returns the view. View is a file in Laravel language called Laravel blade. It's kind of HTML with variables. And welcome means that file is in the resources views. Welcome, which has an extension, this is important, welcome.blade.php. So it's not welcome.php, it's welcome.blade.php. And inside of that blade, as you've seen just previously, it has HTML mostly with some blade syntax variables. So if statement, then auth statement, which means the user is logged in, then another if statement, and a few more variables here and there. Let's try to edit something and you will see that it actually works. So let's change some text. For example, Laravel has wonderful documentation, Laravel framework. Let's add that. We save, then we refresh our home page, project.test, and you can see the text update at Laravel framework. So there's no need to recompile anything or run some terminal commands. You just edit the blade file and the changes appear here. Similarly, you edit the routes file to have another URL. For example, let's duplicate that. Route get second page, for example. Then we have second blade. And let's do welcome blade. Let's do file save as, as second.blade.php in the same folder. And let's change that to second blade. Laravel second framework, something like that. It's just a dummy example of some second page. And then, if we run second in our browser, slash second, then we'll have Laravel second framework as text. And for example, if we remove that home page, what happens if that route doesn't exist, so isn't available in the routes web file, then you will see an error 404 not found. So anything that you just run here by default will throw 404 not found if it's not present in the route file, which is by default routes web. Now let's replace the default Laravel homepage with some kind of design. And I found a bootstrap theme, really basic blog homepage. It's your personal choice what design to use, whether it's bootstrap or tailwind, which became really popular these days. But I'm choosing bootstrap because it doesn't have overhead of running NPM commands to compile the CSS by default. Of course, again, you can deal with front-end in various ways, but I will show you the most simple example because in this course I don't want to dive too deep into front-end. I want to stick with Laravel as a back-end with any kind of design which is different from the welcome default homepage. So the blog looks like this. I've downloaded the theme, free download. I've opened Sublime Text. I use, by the way, Sublime Text personally for HTML editing and something really like text-based, really simple, and PHP Storm for a PHP project. So this is index.html, and I will copy and paste it into PHP Storm into not welcome blade, but let's create another view in resources views, new file index blade PHP. Let's call it index we paste that HTML and let's actually delete both of those second and welcome blade. I delete them and in the routes, I will change the view welcome to view index like this. And now if we refresh our page, the home page looks like this. So it shows something, but without the design. For the design, we need to add the assets. So the theme contains fav icons, styles and scripts and we will copy and paste those files into public folder. So how Laravel works in index blade, for example, on top, we load CSS style CSS, and then at the bottom there should be JS. This one, Bootstrap itself is loaded from CDN, so we shouldn't care about that. But how do we load scripts and styles from resources views folder? How do we reference those files? Those files by default should be in public folder and we copy them as subfolders into public folder. I will use commander on my Mac. So assets, CSS and JS copy into here. And then we reference them as asset with a blade function helper. 
So blade language requires this syntax for any variable or any command. And in this case, we'll use a helper called asset and cut and paste inside. This will return the full URL of project.test slash CSS slash styles CSS. And we do the same thing for the JS. So asset and then JS script JS here like this. And also I probably forgot fab icon. Yes. So asset like this asset assets five icon paste. And now if we refresh our page, we refresh and we have the full design. Of course, it's a static homepage for now, and we will work on that in the future lessons. But what I wanted to show you in this lesson is how to reference the styles, which should be in the public folder. Instead of that, you could potentially also do something like this. So reference the files from the homepage, but that requires you to have public directly in your domain name. So then you cannot place your project in a subfolder, for example. I'm not saying I would recommend to do that, but generally this is more strict. Asset compiles the URL no matter where your project is actually located on the server. So if we take a look at the view source here, as you can see, project.test slash CSS refers to public folder in your Laravel project, and then whatever comes after the domain is the subfolder and the file in your public folder. Now let's create a few more static pages for about and contact, for example, and we won't create the blog in this course, so we'll remove the blog. So in the index blade, let's remove the blog as link, and then we have home, about, and contact. So let's create the about. We will do file save as and have about blade. And here you can see that there are repeating things. So header and footer and menu. And later in this lesson, we will talk about layouts. But for now, let's create three static pages. So instead of welcome to blog home, we have about us. And for example, about us text, or let's actually leave that in header. And in the container, let's make it like this. So full row and paragraph and we will remove everything that is related to the blog because we don't actually need it. We don't need any widgets. This should be okay. So we have about blade and in the routes web, let's duplicate that and have URL about which points to the about blade again in the resources views folder. And now if we go to slash about, let's see how it looks. We have slash about great about us and then about us text in the main section of our page. In a similar fashion, let's create contact and I will show you one more trick with routes. So we have contact blade and let's change the text to contact us and contact us text. And in the routes web, we could do copy and paste into another contact but there is a shorter way. For now, let's make it a longer way and have contact, which works. But if you have route, which just points to static HTML to static blade file, there's route view, which is not requiring the callback function. Another parameter, it has two parameters. So route view, URL and blade file name, that's it. So we can shorten our routes to about about like this and then contact contact. Let's actually duplicate that. Okay. Contact still works about still works. Homepage still works. Great. And now let's take care of the repeating parts. So in both index blade and in the about blade and also in the contact blade, the menu is repeating the all HTML is repeating. So if, for example, you want to change something like start bootstrap, like add starts bootstrap here, it will change only in the about blade, but not elsewhere. So let's add a layout here where the main, the common things would be placed. And then inside of each blade, we will take care only of the content of that blade file. So let's file save as index blade to resources views slash layouts, for example, this is optional, but I prefer subfolders for that layouts and let's call it app layout app blade. 
and we will leave everything except for the main part except for this part so header and container will be dynamic and dynamic means that we need to use a blade command called yield and yield is with a parameter of section name it will be content let's call it content and we remove all of that until footer footer remains in the layout so navigation menu and the footer remains but we have index blade which is empty and we paste only the blog content and we wrap that into section so add section content which will be the beginning of the section at at the end we'll have end section you will see it more clearly when we get to the about and the contact pages so we get the section for the index for the content which corresponds to yield content so the same name and we need to specify that we extend the app layout which is extends layouts dot app this is dot which is a subfolder so we extend the app and inside of the content we have this and in the about blade we would do the same thing so we need to leave header and container as it is but we remove everything else so footer html everything and do the same thing extends layouts app and inside we'll have section content and section something like html tag with beginning and an end and let's actually copy and paste that into contact blade and we just change that to contact us and contact us text and now we can go to the main layout which is app blade and actually create the links so href will be not just home but you can of course do it like this so slash then slash about and slash contact but a common behavior and advised behavior for laravel is to use routes and route names so there's laravel blade helper called route and you can call the name however you want so route home then we have let's copy and paste it from here route home then route about and route contact and we will assign those names in the routes web file here to each of them so this route will be called home this will be name about and this will be name contact something like this and now let's try to navigate we refresh we click about we click contact we click home so we created three static pages which extend the same layout and the content is different so we've built a static home page and a few pages but now let's talk about backend about the database structure and the data at all how laravel deals with that for database structure you don't need to create database tables manually in your mysql client for that laravel uses a concept called database migrations so you describe your database schema in migration files and then you run the migrations which create the database let's take a look at the default migrations from laravel they are in database migrations and there are four files generated by default the last three are not that relevant for the beginners but the users table is really important and it is suggested suggested the user structure for you which is probably relevant to any project that has users and even if you don't know the structure how migrations are written it's pretty readable so you need id field the table name is users and then fields string name string email unique so emails cannot repeat then timestamp verified at or not by default nullable then password remember token is specifically laravel thing to use for remember me checkbox and then timestamps which means created at and updated at field kind of system fields for every database table now how can we use those migrations to create our database by default the database is empty i've just created a database called project in my mysql client which is table plus locally but that doesn't matter you can use whatever mysql client and then in the terminal you run a command php artisan migrate it executes all the migrations from the database migrations folder let's take a look at others for example password resets which is used for forgot your password function and a few more system tables 
So if we run PHP Artisan Migrate, see for every migration it's migrating and migrated. So start of the process, end of the process, and how much it actually took. And now if we take a look at our database, we refresh and we have all those tables created. So users table, empty by default, but structure is created. Important note here to run the migrations, and I'm shooting this part of the video afterwards because I remembered I didn't mention the configuration. So how to connect to your database, if you have, for example, database server locally, it is done in config database PHP, so the credentials to the database, and there may be multiple credentials in one Laravel project. You may have SQLite driver for your tests, for example, you may have the main MySQL driver with a lot of parameters. Also, there's PostgreSQL, SQL Server with additional drivers. But what we do need to know is ENV. What is ENV? In Laravel project, there should be a file called .env. So ENV is the extension. It's not env.something. It's .env in the main folder. So here. And it contains all the environment variables. That's why it's called ENV, short for environment. It is created by default in every Laravel project and it should be uploaded to the server when you launch the project live. And by default, it is copied from a file.env.example. And in the very beginning, the Laravel installer, when I called Laravel new project, replaced some variables with the values of, for example, app URL project.test. So this is the project and then database project. And coincidentally, this is exactly what the data is on my server. So the database is called project. And these are the credentials default from Laravel Valet, which I use locally for the web server. So for your case, you need to change the main credentials here in .env file. Or if you don't have that .env file for whatever reason, you need to create that locally. So what happens, for example, if you don't do that and database name is, for example, default or whatever. What would happen when you run PHP Artisan Migrate? Let's try to do that, PHP Artisan Migrate, and you would have error, unknown database default. So to avoid that, you need to provide the credentials here to connect to your database. And in general, there are more system environment variables for something like email sending. This is often used for external applications like AWS, Pusher, or Redis, or whatever, which are optional and many of you will not use them in the beginning. But generally, you need to know that .env file contains the variables. And then those variables are used in the config files of Laravel project, including config app, for example, for app name, and in config database, some of the variables are hard-coded and some of the variables have values from env file and env function helper has a second parameter default. So if you don't have env file or if you don't have the variable like dbhost by default, it will be equal this value. Now let's get back to running the migrations. As you can see, what is in Laravel language as id becomes big integer in the database, string becomes varchar255, and timestamps become created as an updated ad as timestamp. So Laravel has its own kind of language of migrations, how to describe different fields in the database. And let's create our own migration. We will use that for categories of our blog. So this is on the right hand side. Let's create a database table categories. To create a migration, we run PHP Artisan, make migration and then you can name migration however you want but a typical name for creating table is create underscore table name which is categories and underscore table it generates a class a new class as you can see here create categories table and it generates automatically schema create kind of a template with by default two fields id and timestamps and for example our category will have just the name so we add table string name of the category. Every migration file has two methods, up and down. Down can be run if you want to roll back the migrations. How does it work? When we run the migrations again, PHP Artisan Migrate, it will run only the migrations that were not run previously. For that, in the database table migrations, we have the list of what migrations have been run. So those that were executed are already here, kind of logged as executed, finished with batch number. If we run PHP Artisan Migrate again, 
it will run only the categories table migration and if we refresh the full database we have the categories table here now with structure great and in the migrations table if we refresh the data we have batch 2 and we can roll it back by running php artisan migrate rollback and it will roll back only the last batch which is batch number two and it will execute the down method in all of those migrations so roll back and now in our database for migrations we don't have this and we don't have categories table anymore so it was rolled back and it may seem for some of you that this migration system is an overcomplicated thing instead of just creating the table in PHP MyAdmin or Table Plus or whatever is your SQL client. But the logic here is that migrations could be run elsewhere on another server. For example, you created your database locally, then you push your project to GitHub to be run on testing server or on live server or for your teammates for example and how would they create the database on that server would you export the sql and then run it what about the changes on existing database if the data is already live so the goal is that you make the changes you push your code and then whoever needs to update those changes on their database on their server just run php artisan migrate which executes only the last changes since migrations were executed previously there are a lot of things to be said about migrations in detail so you can read official laravel documentation but this is an overview how it works and how can you create database tables as easily as this next we'll try to work with that table get the data and update the data so we've created our categories database table let's try to get the data and fill in the sidebar of categories we will get familiar with a concept called mvc model view controller so three layers which are responsible for viewing the data getting the data and controlling the routes the url let's begin with showing the database i manually for now manually i've created four categories later in this course we will create an admin panel to manage them but for now let's just put in the categories on the sidebar in our routes web we have home for index and let's open that index blade which should contain our categories static for now so these are posts with pagination and here we have site widgets with this list of static categories from the original theme let's replace that with categories from the database but first let's replace that with static categories from the laravel application we will replace the index blade and introduce a thing called controller that syntax of routing url attached to the view directly is used only for static pages but if you want dynamic data you need to introduce a controller which would get that dynamic data and pass that to the view let's generate a controller make controller you will run a lot of artisan commands with laravel of make something run something so php artisan is a great helper so make controller and let's call it home controller like this and one controller may contain multiple pages multiple methods for now we will have one method so let's open home controller which was generated it's just empty laravel class that extends the controller and we will create a method public function index let's call it for the home page and it will return a view so the same view of index it would return the same as it was in the routes but we will have the data passed as an array and for now let's hard code that data so categories equals array of categories for example category one and category two for now and we pass that as categories equals categories or to make it clearer what is what let's call the variable all categories and this will be the variable available in the blade files in the index blade php so if we open that index blade instead of this we can do a for each loop in the blade a lot of commands and directives start with add symbol and add for each works similarly as a php loop for each of the categories as category and let's do and for each and for each like this and we will have category named here category to show the variable this is the syntax and let's remove all of that and let's remove the second column so it will be all in one column call sm12 for example 
So we have our blade file ready, we have the controller that passes the data to that blade. The final piece of the puzzle is the route to change that route view to route get, back to route get. But instead of having index here, we will have array of parameters. First parameter is the controller name, second parameter is method. So we'll have home controller, which is auto completed with my PHP storm, home controller class, and then the method is index. Let's put it on a separate line like this. We save and let's refresh our page. We refresh and we have our categories here on the right from the controller. So this is how it works with routing, controller and the view. Let's introduce another layer which is model, which is responsible for getting the data from the database. To get the data from the database here instead of all categories, there are two ways. First way is to call the database directly with a class called db that comes from illuminate support facade which will be auto completed here by my php storm and you can provide db table categories and then call some methods for example method get which will just get all the data and then you assign that to a variable all categories and then all of those categories will become objects so instead of just all categories as array, now we have categories as category, and then category becomes an object. So we need to specify the field category name. So now if we refresh our page, we refresh and we have four categories now from the database. So one way is a DB so-called facade class, but a more appropriate approach and more common is to create a model, so-called model, which is an eloquent model. Eloquent is a database layer of Laravel, kind of a layer between the Laravel framework and the database. It has a lot of features, a lot of methods. That's why it's more convenient to use eloquent instead of DB table. To create a model, run the command make model. And typically model name is the database table in singular form. So if we have categories, then the model is category. And it will by default work with categories table. Let's open up category model, our new model. It extends the model from eloquent, this one. You can ignore has factory for now. We don't really care about that. And you can specify what table does it work with. You can specify table, categories, but as I said, by default, it is plural form of the model name. So you don't need to specify that it will be by default. And then in the controller, instead of this, we can do category model, which will be again auto completed by my PHP storm method all. That's it. So we don't specify the database table. We don't specify get. We have all categories. And if we refresh our page, it should still work. All categories are here. And now we don't need the DB here. And actually we don't need the request here, which was generated by Laravel by default. And we have our categories listed on the page from the database. So as a summary, it is really important to understand the whole workflow request lifecycle of MVC, which is route controller model and view. So routes web has the controller and the method index inside of that method. You may or may not use the model to perform some data operations and then you pass some data into the view, which is then displaying that data as blade language with variables. This is the core fundamental of almost every Laravel page in very simplified version. Now let's take care of the posts by category. So here in the main section, we have the list of posts and we will create a model for that as we did for categories, but also we will define so-called relationship. So every post should belong to one of the categories. And then we will build the links to the home page with category as a parameter. So let's start with a data structure and we can generate a model, PHP Artisan make model post. And here I will show you a trick. We need migration for the post, so database schema and the model for the post. And you can create two in one, make model post while also creating a migration, dash M. And it will create both. It will by default create post table migration again plural for the post model name and we can fill in both so post table we have what fields do we need actually string title table text for longer text which is description or post text let's call it post text uh, when it was posted will be defined by timestamps and we need to have a relationship which category does it belong to 
to create that relationship. Of course, we need to have a field name. So you can do that as integer and let's call it category underscore ID. But to create it as a foreign key on the database level, along with the field, we need to add foreign ID. There are multiple methods to define foreign IDs, as you can see in my PHP Storm autocomplete. But I will show you the most typical one, which is foreign ID. And then you need to name the field as singular form of the foreign table, which is categories. So we need category ID. And then you define a thing called constraint, which means that it refers to the ID field on that categories table. We can run the migration again, PHP Artisan migrate, and we will have our posts. If we refresh our database, we still have the categories, but on the left, we have posts empty for now. And behind the scenes, I've created a few dummy posts. Again, for now, we're talking about getting the data. Later, we will talk about how to create that data as admin panel. But for now, let's get those posts on the home page. So in the same index controller, home controller, sorry, index method, alongside categories, we do posts. So posts, post, you can do all, or you can get the latest post, right? So order by ID descending, for example, or you can do latest. So again, Eloquent has a lot of features and a lot of methods to help you get the data from the database. So I will do post latest get, and then we need to pass that alongside categories. And here I will show you another trick. So for example, let's have that as array, but add post equals post. And imagine we have not all categories, but the variable with the same name. And there's a shorter way to describe the same thing. And that's a PHP trick. It's not Laravel or Eloquent. So if we have array of the same keys and the same values, then shorter way is to use a method called compact PHP, compact categories and posts like this. And we don't need that array anymore. So it would be something like this. And now let's show those posts in the index blade. Somewhere on top, we had those posts. Let's actually delete the featured post because we don't have the functionality for that. And let's just do for each of the blog posts. We will do for each of posts as post. You are already familiar with that. And let's remove that one and add and for each here. And each post will have dummy image. Let's leave it as it is. Then we'll have post created at post created at. Then we'll have post title, post title. And let's show the description, the post text as fully. You can make it shorter, like first 50 symbols or so. And let's leave everything else as it is. Let's delete all the other hard coded post and let's delete the pagination. We will not discuss that here. And let's actually even delete the search widget because we won't implement it either in this course and site widget is also irrelevant. We save and let's refresh our page. We refresh and we have post one, post two, post three and post four directly from the database. And now let's add a parameter of that index blade. Let's put a link to the category, which will be linked to the route route name of index which comes from the routes web. This one actually it is home, sorry, route home with some parameters. And there are a few ways how to define the parameters for the route, but we will use the easiest one, not even Laravel, but PHP parameters. So we have route and then we have question mark category ID ID equals category ID like this. So this will be the link. And then in here in the home controller, we can filter posts by where category ID. So category ID equals, we get that category ID with Laravel helper called request, request category ID. And then we have latest and get, let's format it. And let's refresh our page. We should have a parameter here, empty homepage. Why? Because we don't have category ID as a parameter, so there are no posts. But if we click category ID, as you can see, category ID one here, and now we have the first post from the first category from the database. It is this one. If we click category two, we'll have 
two posts, so that is working. And finally, let's fix the home page so it wouldn't be empty. It would show all the categories. I will show you one trick with Eloquent. It's not really for a beginner, but so you would understand the power of Eloquent and why you should use that. There's a syntax post when, so some kind of condition, which is condition would be when request category ID exists. So true or false. If we have request category ID, then another parameter, we add a callback function of what we should do with the query. Let's call the variable query. And then we add the where condition, but only in case of request category ID existing. We add query where like this. And this is our final query. Let's reformat it like this. And we refresh our homepage. And we have all the posts. But if we click category two or category three, we have only those posts per category. So now you've learned a bit more about Eloquent and about how to get the parameters from the URL from PHP. Now I want to talk about another way of routing parameters in Laravel. So I've seen how to catch the get parameters with question mark, but a more typical way is to have parameters inside of the URL. So for example, project.test slash posts slash ID of the post as variable. So let's create that individual post page and you will see how to catch that parameter, how to get the data from the database with Eloquent. And also I will show you a thing called route model binding to do that quicker. So first let's generate a separate controller which would be responsible for everything about the post. Make controller, post controller. And inside of that, we will have a method called show post, for example, and potentially more methods in the future. So for now, let's create public function show the parameter will be post ID. And inside of that, we will find the post with eloquent. We have a function called find, which will automatically find by ID field on the database. And then we return a view. We will create a view called post, for example, post blade, and we will pass the post variable as compact as array. And we don't need the request here and controller is ready. Now let's create that post blade view. And for that, we will open about blade and just do file safe as it will be a really simple blade without any difficult layout. We will just replace about us with post title, which comes from post object post title and about us text will be replaced with post post title. So we have the page and the controller ready. Now how to get that into the route, how to get that parameter. So route get, we create a new route posts with a parameter and parameter has the syntax of this and we will name it post ID and another parameter will be as here array of controller and method which is post controller auto completed by my PHP storm and method show let's close the sidebar so you would see all the picture or maybe like this and we will assign a name to that route name for example posts show or something like this and that post ID name should be the same variable name as here. Then that parameter would automatically be passed. And in the browser, let's try to load that URL to posts one. And we have post one without the text for some reason. Maybe I made some typo. Of course, it's not post title, post text. Refresh and we have post text. Of course, the design is not pretty, it should be margin and padding, but that's not what I wanted to show you here. What I wanted to show you is how to pass the parameter and how to catch that in the routes. But also for such cases where you have individual record caught by ID in the URL, Eloquent has even better solution. So instead of having post ID, you're expecting post already as an object. And then in the parameter of show, you type hint that it is a post object of model post and you define the parameter post as variable. And then this happens automatically under the hood. So we can remove that and we can just return the view. And if we refresh the page, it still works. If we load posts two, it worked. So this thing is called route model binding because it's binding the model by type hinting the model object type with the parameter here. Also, what it will do if that post doesn't exist, for example, if we load something else, it will automatically show 404 not found page. 
So the final thing we need to do in this lesson is to get those links. We have route name, let's actually use it. We open index blade and we have for each of the posts here somewhere. Yep, here, let's add a link. So instead of having this, we will have a link to route with the name posts show and parameter post ID. So all the parameters should be listed after the comma as a second parameter of route helper. So we save and if we reload the homepage, project test like this, the image should be a link, which will lead us to post one. So this is how you pass the parameters to the actual routes. And it is advisable to use route names instead of URL, because the URLs may be changed in the future, and the route names will stay consistent, and you won't have to make changes for URLs in all of the project in all of the files. So route names make it more easily manageable. Until now, we've been working with existing data and showing the data. Now let's take a look at how we can manage the data and create a simple admin panel to manage categories and posts. And to do that, we will create a separate project, separate Laravel project based on the same models, the same database structure. Why we need to do that? Two reasons. First, Laravel has starter kits, so-called starter kits to help you with authentication and authorization. So login and logout features and registration features come out of the box as Laravel ecosystem packages. The official ones and most popular ones are Laravel Breeze and Laravel Jetstream. And in this course, we will take a look at Laravel Breeze because it's more simple, but it needs to be installed on fresh Laravel project. It wouldn't work on the project that we already have because we have our own routes, our own controller, our own design based on bootstrap and speaking about design, that's the second reason. The official Laravel starter kits use Tailwind CSS and not Bootstrap. So before in this course, I've shown you how to work with a very simple Bootstrap theme to put everything into public. And now we will install Laravel Breeze based on Tailwind CSS because it's now a recommended way in Laravel. You still can use Bootstrap and for Bootstrap, there's a separate starter kit, Laravel UI, which still works but it's not actively advertised and you won't find it in the documentation just because Laravel creators don't really advertise to use Bootstrap. But if you prefer Bootstrap, Laravel UI still works. So I've installed a new Laravel project, fresh Laravel project, project2.test. So if I open the terminal and scroll up, this was my sequence, Laravel new project2. So it installs all the composer packages then CD to the project and make models for category and post and then migrate everything. So we have the database structure. Now let's create admin panel for that based on Laravel Breeze. To install Laravel Breeze, you do composer require Laravel slash Breeze. And by the way, this is how you can install any package from composer. All the package names consist of vendor name, so company name, and then the package name. So we install Laravel Breeze. It is installed in our composer JSON. By the way, important thing. So you would understand how composer works. In composer JSON, there's a list of packages that are required. There are some more settings, but what we need to know is this list of the packages. Some of them or most of them come directly from the framework, including Laravel framework itself. As I mentioned, it is a package as well. And now we installed Laravel Breeze. So when you do composer require, what it does, it adds the line here and then installs that package into a vendor folder. So all the packages exist in vendor, then company name, vendor name, Laravel, for example, and then Breeze. And all those packages work kind of like includes, which you shouldn't touch. So you shouldn't edit anything in vendor folder directly. To extend or customize some package, you need to read the documentation of that package for opportunities and features there. So this is how Composer JSON works for PHP packages. And now let's install Laravel Breeze functionality. So we have installed Breeze itself in the Composer. Now let's execute PHP Artisan Breeze install. It will generate the routes, the views, and some more functionality for us. And then it says install successfully. And I will show you in a minute what it installed. But to have front end compiled, we need to run npm install and npm run dev. I will just blindly copy paste it. Running npm commands and how it works is kind of outside of the course here, of the course scope. What you do need to know is that you need to be able to run npm commands. 
So build successful, to be able to run that, you need to have Node installed and NPM installed. So if you don't have that, check the documentation for those. But what it does, it compiles the front-end assets. So NPM install works similarly to Composer install or Composer require. It takes package JSON file. So Composer JSON is for PHP packages, for backend. Package JSON is for front-end. Something like Tailwind, Alpine JS, Laravel Mix, and others. And then it install it all, not in vendor. So vendor again is for backend and node modules is for frontend packages. And npm run dev compiles the resources JS files and resources CSS files into public folder. The one that we already worked with in the beginning in the bootstrap version. Now we have CSS app CSS compiled and JS app JS compiled and minimized. And now we can refresh our page. So we have project2.test homepage, almost identical, with only difference, those links on the top right. So by installing Laravel Breeze, we have login functionality, including the form, then back to homepage, we have register, and I will try to register, I will use fake filler Chrome extension, I register, and I land on the dashboard inside. So just by installing Laravel Breeze, we have login and registration functionality with a simple design. So I can also log out and it all works for us. Now, how does it work? What Breeze actually generated? So if we go to routes web file, we see the same welcome from default Laravel. And this is new thing that was generated by Laravel Breeze. The dashboard, which is protected by so-called middleware auth, which means only for logged in users and also name dashboard. And then inside of routes web, we include another routes file from the same directory, which is auth.php. And it contains more route get statements, including route group. So a few things that I need to explain here. Route group is a functionality where you can group a lot of routes into a group, assigning some kind of set of rules to that group. For example, middleware guest means only for not logged in users. So if the user is not logged in, we have route get register, which points to registered user controller, create form. And if we click to that controller and see what's inside, create just loads the view form and auth register is just a blade file. Then on top of route get, there's route post. So post method of HTTP works in the same way. So for example, if we open register.blade dot php there are some weird things like x something which are blade components this is outside of the scope of this course for beginners but what you need to know is this for method post to action of route register and inside of that store method we actually validate the data and i will talk about that quite soon about validation we create the user so this is another eloquent function how to create the user with user model and then we redirect, return redirect, we don't return the view, return redirect to the URL, which is home, which is in one of the Laravel internal files, which is slash dashboard. So this is all generated mostly by Laravel Breeze, all authentication file with a lot of routes to registration, login, forgot password, and then also there's email verification, logout, and a few more features, which you may not even use in the beginning. So if you want to generate all of that quickly, use Laravel Breeze as a starter kit. Now let's create our administrator user. And for that, I will tell you about concepts like factories and seeds. So with database migrations, talk about the structure of the data, tables and columns. But there's also database factories and seeds to seed the data, some fake data or some real data. So for example, database seeder, which is by default in Laravel, may create you fake temporary users like for example in this case commented out code load the factory 10 users and create them that user factory is in database factories user factory and this is the definition of that fake user to be created it uses a library called faker which is not a laravel library it's php library and it is already installed here in that extends factory class so you don't need to define this faker it's already here and this means that generate the user with name of faker name email of unique safe email password is hashed version of password so if we uncommented in the database seeder this line and we run 
php artisan db seed look what happens database seeding completed successfully and in our database so we have our project to database that i've created we have users with generated fake users those two were from my manual testing in the previous section of the video of the course and these 10 were generated automatically as you can see with created at the same timestamp so this is generally the concept of seeding the data so you have database seeder inside of that you can call the factory in the factory you can define your own rules for fields and then you can add more factories generate fake posts generate fake articles categories or whatever to make it a bit more structured there's a concept called seeding file seeder class to generate a seeder class let's actually generate one for the admin seeder we will do php artisan make seeder admin seeder for example it will generate a file in database seeders admin seeder and it will have its own run method let's actually copy and paste from here user factory create and we will create one user and to execute that admin seeder from database seeder we add that to the list as this call admin seeder class will generate one user but we do need that user to have some kind of admin field or admin condition so let's add a new field to the users table for our simple case it will be called is admin true or false boolean field and for this admin we will fill in as true and in here you will also find out how to generate migration for some change of the data new migration doesn't have to be for new table you may make changes as well php artisan make migration and a general rule of thumb to name that migration is add field name for example is admin to table name users table like this then laravel will generate migration with the text of schema table it's not schema create remember for creating post there's schema create which is creating the table for any changes there's schema table and then you may add fields like just table string or table whatever in our case it will be boolean field is admin by default false so default false like this and we do php artisan migrate which will execute only the last migration here like this and then in the factory in our admin seeder we can override some fields some default fields by providing the array here so create is admin equals true by default and let's run our seeds and let's see what happens so php artisan db seed again and see the difference if there's a separate seeder file it is seen in the list as seeding and seeded similarly like migrating and migrated but if you execute the factory inside of the main database seeder that is not in the terminal so that's another reason to probably use seeders as separate classes and let's see the database we refresh we have 10 users generated from id 13 to 22 and id 23 should be with is admin 1 exactly as we specified here by default the password of all those users is password it's not secure i know it is defined in the user factory here i already showed you that you can change that or you can override that but as a proof i will show you that it actually works so let's log in with that user copy and paste email password and i'm inside the dashboard so generally this is how seeding work with factories in laravel of course you can dig deeper and read more in the documentation there are more possibilities but this is an overview to get you familiar with that concept as a beginner now let's build the page to manage categories instead of that dashboard or in fact on top of that dashboard let's open the navigation blade which exists in laravel breeze and let's add a link for that we have a blade component but it's actually the same as you would add just a general link so a href to the route of categories index and i will show you why index in a moment and let's add categories here and we need to copy the css classes of that link and we can do that from nav link component blade from here for example 
Let's just copy the classes. These are Tailwind classes. If you want to find out more about blade components, you may read about them. I thought I would skip that topic in this course for the beginners. So if you want to read about more, XNAF something, read the docs about blade components. So we add a class and we have a link for the categories now. Now let's build that route. For that route, you would think we will build a category controller with index method. And that is true, but in Laravel, if you have a plan to manage the model, so have create form, edit form and stuff like that, it's common to have so-called resource controllers. So if you generate a controller, PHP artisan make controller, category controller, and add a parameter dash dash resource, and also assign a model which to manage, model equals category. Let's see what happens. Controller created successfully. And if we open that category controller, it automatically generates seven methods. Index for the list of the categories, then create form. Store is the submit action of that form. Then show is the single page of that category. Then edit form and update action and destroy action. So seven typical methods for every resource controller. And then you can attach the route to that controller just by doing route resource. So it's not route get or route post, it's route resource, which in itself contains seven methods by default. So categories, and you assign the controller. You don't need to assign controller and method, you assign full controller, category, controller, class. Let's close the sidebar so you would see like this. And then that resource controller has a typical rule of names, which is categories dot something. And you can see that in the official Laravel documentation. So route name of categories index is exactly what we will be in the index method of category controller. Let's fill it in with something really simple for now. Return whatever text and let's refresh the page. So I have refreshed the page and I have categories on top of menu item. And if we click that categories, we have that text AAA. So we build the category, the route, the controller. Now let's build the actual page to show all the categories. We get back to our category controller and we repeat almost the same thing that we already did in the previous lessons. We do categories equals, equals category model all categories and we return the view let's call it categories index with compact of categories. If you want to have blade files in subfolder, like I will do in this case, so there will be categories subfolder and then index blade file, you put the dot here. And let's create that categories index. We have dashboard blade, default from Laravel breeze. Let's do file save as. Let's create a subfolder resources views categories and call it index blade. And it has blade components for the layout, which again is outside of the topic of this course. So I will not edit that at all. I will just rename the header of categories. And instead of you are logged in, I will have a table of categories, table head, row of name, and then button. So header would be empty and then table body. And then for each of categories as category, we will have a row of category row category name, and then there will be a link. So duplicate, and there will be a link to edit. So a, and then the link to the edit form will have similar route name rule. So route categories, we had categories dot index. Now we have categories dot edit and then edit accepts the parameter of which category do we edit. We will again use route model binding here so we can pass full category as a parameter. And by default, it will find the record by ID and edit. And let's refresh our page slash categories. And we have name as a header and let's add some dummy category just for testing. So categories, add a row of test with some timestamp and refresh and we have test with edit link. 
Of course, it should be styled, but in this case, I don't want to spend too much time on styling and CSS. It is Tailwind Framework, so you can add whatever classes you want. If you click Edit, it will show empty page because the edit method is empty for now. So we have index, we have empty create store, we have show and we have edit. So let's build the edit page now. From the controller point of view, all we need to do is return a view of categories, let's call it categories edit with parameter of compact category, which is with route model binding here. So it will find the category by ID and we need to create that edit. So let's do categories index file save as. This is my favorite way to create new files based on other files. So edit blade, category, edit will be the title. And then inside, instead of, instead of the table, we'll have a form. Let's show category name for now. So we will test that it would actually work and show the category. So we refresh and we have test as name. Okay, let's build the form now. Form will have the method of post with action of route categories update this is another rule of resource controllers and parameter of that update will be category itself again with route model binding and then since we're doing update and not store not creating the record we need to add another parameter another input hidden field which is in blade called method and we need to provide that we have method put here so update and then Let's build the input name, for example, input name equals name, value equals category name. So this one like this, so we have value. And then let's add a submit button, button type submit, save, something like this. Let's refresh. And of course, we don't have any input styling. So let's kind of steal those styling from Laravel Breeze. We do have blade components, a lot of blade components. And again, blade components is kind of outside of the course here, but we can take CSS classes from input blade, for example. So I copy a lot of classes from blade component and add a class here. And then the button, we have the button blade as well. And we have a lot of CSS classes. In the edit blade, let's copy and paste the classes into class. If we refresh, for some reason we do have the button styling and we don't have the input. Let's do input type text. Maybe then we'll have, yep, of course. So we have the input and the submit button. Now let's take care of the submit. Submit with route categories update automatically points to category controller update here. And category is passed with route model binding by default. So we can do category update. This is eloquent function. Category is an eloquent model of category. If we click here, we have eloquent model. So we have category update and with update, you can pass parameters of what fields to update. So name will be request name. This is the syntax. Request is a parameter of what is posted with the form and request name, or there are other syntax options like request input, for example, name with key. Actually, let's put it this way, maybe more readable. So we update the category and then we return what? Usually in terms of update and store and delete methods, the return is redirect back or redirect to specific success page. Return, redirect. Redirect is a helper which has a chain of redirect to what? And we use redirect route by route name, categories, index. Like this and let's try it out. We refresh the page just in case. Let's rename that to test2, we save, and we have an error called 419 page expired. That is a good thing because I forgot to mention one protection for forms in Laravel. For every form that has post or put or other methods, you should add a thing called CSRF token like this. It generates an individual token for that specific form which prevents multi-submission of the same form from elsewhere. So someone could maliciously post the form submission multiple times to your server, and this generates unique token for that specific form, which means that this form could be used only once. So if someone tries to update the category from elsewhere, they would fail with 419. So let's refresh the form again. Test two, we save, 
and then we have another error of name should be fillable. And here we get back to eloquent model. So to perform the update with fields, we need to specify which fields are fillable. In the category model, as in any model, you need to provide fillable array and provide the list of fields to be fillable. In our case, it's just the name. And let's perform the same thing on the post model so I wouldn't forget it in the future. So what we have fillable, we have title of the post, post text from what I remember, and category ID like this. And now if we refresh our page again, we resubmit the form. Finally, we are redirected back to categories with test two updated data. So now we finished with the update of the category. Now let's quickly build the create form and this will be almost copy paste. So in the index blade of the list of the categories before the table, let's add a link, link to the route of categories create and the text of add new category. Let's add a few line spaces here. So on the table, if we refresh, we have that add new category, which leads to create, which is empty for now. So in the category controller, let's create the create method, return view categories create. And we don't have any parameters because we don't have any category object yet. We're creating that. And we just open edit blade and I will do file save as to create blade like this category new category the form method post action will be to categories store and we don't need any parameters because as I said we are creating a new category we don't need method put because it remains post for the create and we don't have any value yet because we're only creating that at the moment and it should be fine so we refresh create blade and we have the name to save saving is really similar to the update method so with update we had this to the create method to the store method actually we add this code category model because we don't have category as object yet so we need to use the facade create and same array name equals request input name like this and we return redirect back so i will just copy and paste redirect route like this let's try it out new name of abc we save and we have abc in the table again the table is unstyled but i don't think it really matters in the scores you can play around with tail and styles yourself finally the delete method which is called destroy in the resource controller and this will be a bit tricky because it's not a link it will be a button so we expand that td let's close the sidebar again so we have edit as a link but delete should be a form let me show you the syntax it should be a form of method post action should be a route of categories destroy with destroying what category again route model binding then we add csrf then we add method called delete and all we need to add later is a button to submit that button type submit delete and let's add a javascript for confirmation on click return confirm are you sure if that returns false then the delete would not happen we refresh and yes, we do have that delete. If we click, we have the confirmation. If we cancel, nothing happens. If we delete and click OK, it would automatically fire the destroy method. And let's actually implement it right away. So we do category again with eloquent function delete. We delete the object and then return redirect back. Copy and paste like this. So we confirm and then our category is deleted. So I'm running through that pretty quickly but I hope you get the idea how it all works. There are eloquent functions like category delete and category update with specific fields, or if it's empty category, create one. Resource controllers have specific method names, seven methods by default, which you can refer to as categories dot something with parameters or without parameters, depending on that URL. So with all of that, we've built our CRUD, our managing the categories page. The link to that is in a separate commit in GitHub repository, so you can play around and see what is actually happening in the code if you miss something in this lesson. 
Now let's talk about middleware and authentication because we created admin user. So why not we use that and assign the access only to admins for managing the categories, right? And we currently already have middleware auth, which I mentioned briefly previously. It means that this route is accessible only for logged in users. And auth is a name of the middleware, one of the middlewares that are offered by Laravel directly. You can view those middlewares in file called app HTTP kernel. And there are middlewares like auth, guest, and others. So basically middleware, how it works, it runs some checks before the URL, before the route. And if that check returns false, then it throws some error, or it may redirect somewhere to the error page or something like that. So in case of auth, if someone wants to launch the dashboard while not being logged in, for example, I'm logged out and I'm trying to launch the dashboard, it would automatically redirect me to login form. This is how auth middleware works. And we probably should assign the same middleware to our categories route resource because only logged in users should be able to edit categories. So we could of course do middleware and then you can add middleware if it's a single middleware as string like auth or you can assign multiple middlewares as array comma some other middleware so for example authenticated and also admin user middleware which you would create by yourself but let's use a thing called route group which we briefly have seen in laravel breeze auth file and create a route group which would be only for logged in users so route group and the first parameter of the group is array of potential rules like middlewares and we add middleware auth and then the second parameter is a callback function which would contain the list of routes and then we get route get inside of that group and then on that specific route we don't need to specify middleware auth because it comes from the route group. And then we can put that route resource also inside of the same group because we need middleware auth protection. So again, we don't need to specify middleware here. Let's try it out. Let's try to launch the categories here. Again, I'm logged out categories and I'm redirected back to login. So our middleware works. Now let's create our own custom middleware to check if the user is admin or not. To do that, we run artisan command make middleware. And we call the middleware is admin middleware. As you have noticed, I like to put the suffixes, the endings of the class, so it would be absolutely clear what it is. Is it a controller? Is it middleware? Is it something else? Except for models. So if you don't have any endings and suffix, it's likely to be eloquent model. So is admin middleware is generated in the folder app HTTP middleware is admin middleware. And the default structure is handle method, which returns next of the request and before that return you need to add some kind of condition and if that condition is met you can abort you can redirect elsewhere so kind of override the next the middleware is kind of like a firewall or airport security check if you want to call that it checks something and prevents something so stop from fulfilling the request otherwise if it's good then it passes you through to the next request whatever it is. It may be next middleware after that, next gate of security check, or it may just run the URL and controller. So here we need to check if our user is admin. For that, we have helper called auth, another helper inside called user, and that would return us user object, logged in user object. And then we have a field in the database name. Admin is the name of the field. So if not is admin, then we add a return. So return some error. And again, another helper of Laravel is called abort. Abort would show error page and stop everything else from happening. And we can pass the status code of that abort, which is 403, which is by default unauthorized. Authenticated, so logged in, but not authorized, meaning don't have permission for that specific feature. So we have our middleware. Then we need to register our middleware in the same kernel file, which I've mentioned previously here, alongside the existing ones like auth and other stuff, we can assign any name, 
for example, is admin, and just specify our class is admin middleware class, which would be auto completed by my PHP storm here on top. And now we can use that route name in here, the middleware name assigned to our route resource. So look what happens. We have group middleware by auth, but inside of that group for a specific route, we can assign extra middleware like here middleware is admin. Let's put it on a different line, something like this. So now if I log in as non admin user, for example, this one, so I log in and I'm on the dashboard. But if I click categories, I should see 403 forbidden. That's another word for unauthorized. So in this section of the course, I wanted to show you how middleware works, both the default middlewares and auth is by far the most popular one, and also how you can create your own custom middleware. Finally, let's build the functionality to manage the posts, which I partly did behind the scenes because it's almost identical to the CRUD create, read, update and delete of categories. So to save you some time, I did the same thing and I will show you the code now and we'll explain a few things more, such as eloquent relationships and validation of the form. So first, what I did behind the scenes, new link posts, how it works, table, again, unstyled table with just title and category, we add a new post, we fill in something, we choose the category, ABC or XYZ, we save and we have the title and we want to view the category and this is where we will use eloquent relationships in a minute. But generally it all works so I can choose another category, save or delete the post. In the code, a new thing to you probably is route group may contain other route groups inside. So middleware auth is for all of that set of routes. And inside of that, we have two route resources for categories and posts, almost identical, but with the same middleware of is admin. And in the navigation blade, I've added two links. One of them is for categories and one of them is for posts, again with posts index. And actually, let's make an if statement. Blade also contain if statement and also has access to auth user. So let's check if user is admin, only then we show those links. And if similarly to for each and for each, we have if and if let's reformat that with PHP storm auto format. And now if I'm logged in as admin, I see those links. And if I were to log in with non admin user, those would not be even visible. That's a pretty typical security measure for the functionality hide that from the front end and also validate it from the back end. So we have the link to manage posts, which is route resource leading to the post controller. And it's almost the same thing as category controller, post all, we show them. Then for the create, for the dropdown, we do need the categories and then we pass them here. Then store is creating the post and redirecting back. Show is empty because we don't use that in this course, in this lesson. Category all is also needed for the edit form and for the compact, you can pass many parameters, comma separated. Update happens like this and destroy happens like this. Almost the same as categories. In the create blade, a new thing maybe to you for the form, we will have category dropdown, which is select and then another for each. In fact, it's not new to you because you have seen for each before. So for each of the categories, every category is an object. So we assign the value of ID and show the category name here. What would be new maybe is in edit form in the post edit, we assign the values of post title. If it is an input text for text area, we assign the value in the middle of text area per HTML specification. And for the dropdown, it's a bit different. We need to assign the selected based on some condition. And in Laravel 9, pretty recently, they introduced a blade directive selected and then the condition of true or false. Before Laravel 9, you should write an if statement here. If this, then selected option. So this was an overview of what I did for the post CRUD and let's work on this one. So for each of the posts, we need to show the category of the post. So in the database, we do have a field post category ID, but how do we view the post category and then name? For that, you should define eloquent relationship. And this is one of the most powerful feature of eloquent at all. So in the post model, you define public function category and there are various types of relationships. In our case, post belongs to a category. So it's a one to many relationship, parent and child. So category is a parent and child belongs to the category. So we return this 
belongs to category class, the model. And then we can use post category function like this post category and then any field of the category database table of category model, which is name in our case. Let's refresh. We have no posts. Let's add something and let's choose non default category. We save and we have category shown here. But here there's a catch. You shouldn't use the relationship like this. Let's add another category. And there is a thing called eager loading to prevent too many SQL queries to the database. So currently our eloquent code would launch three queries, one to get the list of the posts. And then for each of the posts, it would launch the query to the database. If we add another post, there will be four queries to the database. And imagine how many queries will there be for 100 posts. So let's fix that. This is actually the most typical mistake of performance of Laravel projects that I've seen by developers. It's so-called n plus one query. And to test how many queries are there under the hood, we will install a package, composer require, very famous package by this author, Barry VDH, Laravel debug bar. It will add a bar under the page at the bottom. We don't need to configure anything. We just need to reload the page. We reload. And in here at the bottom, you see a bar with a lot of statistics around your request, your page. And one of that, the most important thing is queries. Let's zoom it in and I will make it higher. So how many queries are there under the hood? Select from users is about authentication, which is fine. Then we have select from post the list. And then for each of the post, we are loading the category, which is a bad performance. To avoid that in the code, in the post controller, we need to load those categories with the posts immediately in this request. And instead of post all, we will do with list of relationships. In our case, relation is category. And then instead of all, we have get. So all works only if you have model and then all without any conditions. But if you have at least one condition here, then you need to change all to get. So now we're loading post with category. And then what Eloquent will do under the hood is load all the categories for all the posts in one query. Let's take a look. We refresh the page. And instead of five queries, we have three. One query is still for the users. Then we have select from posts. And then it loads all the existing categories for the existing posts. So this is just a tip, maybe not for the beginner, but I've seen it so many times from the beginners that you have to know the issue of n plus one query, how to load the relationship. This is called eager loading. And also you need to use Laravel debug bar to test the performance of your eloquent queries. Now let's work on the validation of the form. So if you don't fill anything in here and you hit save, you will see an error from the database. Column title cannot be null. Of course, we can make it nullable in the database, but basically we don't check if anything is filled in the form. And let's do that. Of course, you can do that from HTML level first. So in create blade, you can do something like input required. So then if we refresh the page and we save the form, you will have this. But someone could send the request not directly from the browser. It could be mobile application with API or just someone maliciously trying to launch the request to your form. So you need the backend validation as well. For now, let's remove any front end validation and focus on the backend. And this is what we need to do in the post controller store method. There are a few ways how you can achieve that. First, you need to have the set of rules for each field. And those rules could be placed in the controller itself or in a separate form request class. First, you can do request validate here. And the parameter is the set of rules. Set of rules means array of field and then validation rule, for example, title validation rule is required. There are a lot of available validation rules. You can find them all in the documentation. For now, let's focus on those simple ones, title, post, text required, and then also maybe category ID required as well. So all of those required. And now if we try to fill in the form or in fact, refresh the form and not fill anything, we save and we are redirected back. So if validation fails, what it does, redirects back 
with error messages in the session. We just didn't show them anywhere yet. To show the errors, I will use the official validation documentation code snippet displaying the validation errors. And there is an example. There is an errors variable object passed by default with the error validation. And all we need to do is in the create blade before our form, for example, let's just show all the errors exactly as it is pointed in the documentation. So if there are errors on multiple fields, it will be a list of errors. And let's reload our page. We save, and now we have title field is required, post text field is required. So list of errors. Of course, again, unstyled, it should be probably in red or something like that, but this is how you view the errors. You can also show them individually after every field separately, so you can read about that, all of that in the validation documentation. But what I wanted to show you here also in this video is to make your controllers shorter, which is general kind of a recommendation. So controller should not contain the logic. It should be as small as possible and the logic should be elsewhere. So for that, Laravel has a concept of form request class, which replaces the parameter of request. So we create a separate class with PHP artisan make request. Let's call it store post request. And then we replace the request type with store post request auto completed by my PHP storm. So add it here on top. And then we move that array of validation rules inside of store post request in the rules method. There are two methods in every form request class authorized, which means authorized or not. And by default, I prefer to use true, but it should actually contain the logic of if someone has access to that and there are rules and that's it. So in the controller, we don't need to validate anything. Validation will happen automatically. Whenever Laravel reaches this method, it will launch form request first. And then if it fails, it will redirect back with session errors. Otherwise we'll launch the method itself. So we can try to do that. Refresh the page. Don't fill anything. We save and exactly the same behavior, but the code is in the form request class. So that's it for this short introductory course, your first project, or in fact, two mini projects with Laravel. And now you should have understanding how Laravel works, but you're not ready yet to create Laravel projects on your own. So you need practice. Come up with some kind of mini projects for yourself or for your friends or family or charity. And then along the way, get deeper into the topics that you work with. With that, I can help in 2021, I've created Laravel Learning Path, which contains a lot of topics, kind of step by step. We covered a lot of beginner level topics, but you can still repeat them and dig deeper with links to the official documentation because there are a lot of things that we didn't cover on those topics. And then you move on to more relationships, for example, belongs to many, many to many and stuff like that. And by the end of that beginner level, you should create your own CRUD with more functionality than it was in this course. So you can use that roadmap as well as the links to both repositories that we covered in this course. And now your Laravel career is just at the beginning. So get to work, practice more, read the documentation, read the tutorials, watch my videos on YouTube, post your question on, for example, Laracast forum or on Twitter. You can also check my other courses. A lot of them are quite advanced, so you may be not ready for topics like advanced Laravel Livewire or refactoring examples or GraphQL, but there are easier topics like queues in Laravel, which you will need at some point, how to structure databases, some demo projects step-by-step -step, like live coding for six hours. So you can learn how to create real projects and how to create Laravel API. So choose and pick what you need. There are 28 courses at the moment. And the best thing, the best deal, how you can get that is to sign up for the yearly membership. And I will fill in with more courses every month. And by subscribing to the yearly membership, you actually support my YouTube channel where I publish videos daily for free. That's it guys. And good luck with your Laravel career.